15% of global greenhouse emissions are coming from livestock agriculture. This number is greater than the pollution emitted by cars, airplanes, trains, buses, ships, and rockets combined. These farms use 70% of agricultural land which leads to deforestation and water pollution. They also require a massive amount of water. We're talking about billions of gallons. Look at this illustration. One pound of beef requires 1800 gallons of water. That's only one pound. And if we're going to compare it to human consumption, that's 39 bathtubs full of water. Most cows can produce around 570 pounds of beef. In the US, there are nearly 29 million beef cows that require water to provide us with a variety of delicious beef products such as burgers, steaks, and meatballs. We can see how this livestock agriculture is very unsustainable and has a great impact to our environment. So how can we solve these problems while still enjoying meat? This plant-based meat has its roots in the 19th century when Dr. John Kellogg was asked to develop a new alternative for meat consumption. This was because an agricultural chemist, Charles Dabney, believed that as the population grew, food prices would also increase, making it necessary to explore new protein sources. Dr. Kellogg was determined to turn Dabney's vision into a reality, but of course, it wasn't easy to achieve. He spent countless days experimenting with different ingredients only to be met with disappointment as most of his creations ended up tasting sour or acrid. But after much trial and error, he finally hit the jackpot with a protein-rich substance he named Natos. This thing was made from dehydrated peanuts and wheat. It has a rich meaty flavor which Dr. Kellogg described as a new food for brain and muscle building. It was the first commercial meat alternative in the Western world. Over the years, meat alternatives have become increasingly popular with consumers, leading to a surge of innovation in the meatless meat market. This trend has not only provided more diverse options for those who already follow a plant-based diet, but has also encouraged others to consider a vegetarian lifestyle. Currently, the US market has an abundance of companies offering plant-based meat products. But for now, we're talking about these two. Beyond Meat was founded in 2009 by Ethan Brown who licensed the process and formula to two professors at the University of Missouri. Its first product, the Beyond Chicken Strips, contains soy powder, gluten-free flour, carrot fiber, and other ingredients that undergo food extrusion which uses steam, pressure, and cold water to form the texture of real chicken. Beyond Burger was launched in 2014, made from proteins of pea, rice, and mung bean, and adding canola oil and coconut oil, sunflower lecithin, potato starch, and pomegranate powder. To imitate how real beef is cooked, Beyond Meat uses red beet juice to make their burger bleed. Impossible Foods was founded in 2011 by Dr. Patrick Brown who was a former Stanford University professor. He and his team of scientists analyzed meat at its molecular level to know why meat looks, cooks, and smells like meat. Unlike its competitor, Impossible Foods developed world-class research and technology to recreate the entire sensory experience of meat using plants. The first product, Impossible Burger, has different ingredients than Beyond Burger. This body is made from wheat, protein from potatoes, and fat from coconuts. But there's a secret sauce that makes this patty look and taste like a real beef patty. He 
Hemoglobin is a protein in our red blood cells that spread out oxygen throughout our body. Also, this is what makes our blood red. Impossible food scientists discovered that the roots of the soy plant contain a molecule called leg hemoglobin, which can be used to create a substance called heme. However, due to sustainability concerns, they decided to create a laboratory-made version of heme by copying the DNA of the soy's leg hemoglobin and inserting it into yeast for fermentation. In 2019, the Impossible Burger, a plant-based burger developed through a collaboration between Impossible Foods and Burger King, debuted across the U.S. touting a 100% plant-based and zero beef composition. The burger received critical acclaim from customers and food bloggers, and it was predicted that Burger King would see a 3.1% increase in same-store sales in the U.S. However, after more than a year of being on the menu, Burger King sales only grew by 0.6%. That's only a fifth of expected growth. One reason for this disappointing sales growth is the burger's texture and flavor. Customers expressed dissatisfaction with the soggy toppings and dry patty, which failed to deliver the juicy, satisfying taste of a regular Whopper. But Burger King is not the only one who has experienced disappointing results with plant-based burgers. In February 2022, McDonald's partnered with Beyond Meat to introduce the Mac plant featuring Beyond Meat's plant-based patties. The burger exceeded initial sales forecast and proved to be a massive hit outpacing the number of Big Macs typically sold at McDonald's which can be as high as 100 Macs per day. But just like Burger King, it didn't last long. Most of the stores where Macplant was available are restaurants in rural areas owned by franchises. They assessed that they didn't see enough evidence to support a national rollout of this product shortly. While most fast food restaurants fail to achieve their expected outcome, it's a different story for some brands. KFC introduced its first plant-based chicken called Beyond Fried Chicken. This product was first tested in a single restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia to see if it would increase its food traffic. By the way, the product is just nuggets and boneless wings, not that bucket of chicken or sandwiches. After the announcement of this new item, it sold out in just 5 hours. Beyond Chicken reached 2 billion BJ impressions, leading to expanding the test to 65 locations in Nashville and Charlotte and some restaurants in Southern California that sold out again in just one week. With these positive outcomes, KFC and Beyond Meat announced the nationwide rollout of Beyond Fried Chicken in January 2022 until the supplies last. While plant-based meat can be beneficial in resolving environmental impact of traditional meat, there are also downsides to consider. Hey guys, it's me from the editing phase of this video and before we move on to the next part is I just want to point out some important information that I missed throughout this video and the first one is the environmental impact of plant-based meats. So, plant-based meats use 93% less water, 95% less land, and 90% fewer greenhouse emissions than traditional meat production. Therefore, plant-based meat are the best options if we want to slow down the climate change while still enjoying meat. Another thing is about KFC's Beyond Fried Chicken. Currently, I'm watching some food reactions or reviews from other creators on YouTube about this meatless chicken. Most of them expressed disappointment regarding the texture of the chicken. In most of the videos I watched, the chicken was hard to chew and very sticky. Some of the creators said that their chicken was overcooked, making the meatless chicken look inedible. Right now, I'm searching whether KFC will continue this item with Beyond Meat, but I haven't seen any articles that published this year about the program. With this feedback from customers, it's likely that this item will no longer be available on the KFC menu. 
So these are the things that I think I miss out throughout this video and let's go back to the main topic. Look at this. This article referred to plant-based meats as vegan or vegetarian, which is a really big mistake. Most of these fast food restaurants cook plant-based meat on the same broiler or oven that can come into contact with meat by products. This is the reason why Burger King gets sued for misleading advertisement. If fast food restaurants want to cook this meat in a vegan way, they will need to invest in new equipment and possibly renovate their restaurants which will cost them thousands of dollars. Also, it's important to know that most of these restaurants are owned by a franchisee who can choose what items will be available on the menu. And in this case, plant-based meals are not that popular in most of these restaurants. Now, when it comes to pricing, price is a critical factor that can affect the adoption of plant-based meat items in fast food restaurants. Since plant-based meat can be more expensive to produce than traditional meat, their menu prices may also be higher than regular ones. This can deter some price-sensitive customers or those who are not willing to pay extra for a plant-based option. So these are the things that I think will be the problems of plant-based products on the menu of fast food restaurants. But let's talk about the meat itself. Is it a really healthy alternative to traditional meat? This is the table created by Emily Gelsomin of Harvard Health Publishing. We can see that this plant-based burger has zero cholesterol and contains carbohydrates and fiber that real beef burger doesn't have. The rest is almost the same. But there's one thing that makes plant-based burger very noxious than beef burgers. Impossible and Beyond Burgers contain nearly 400 times the amount of sodium found in regular beef burgers. This high intake of sodium can cause high blood pressure which can lead to heart disease, stroke, and even death. Another ingredient found in plant-based burgers is glyphosate. A study conducted by Dr. Jan Fagan found that both Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat contain glyphosate with Impossible Foods containing higher levels. And where we can find glyphosate? Well, herbicide. Oh, remember the heme that Impossible Foods uses for its burgers? Well, the company admitted to the FDA that they did not conduct any safety tests on it. Additionally, they also told FDA that their heme is composed of 46 unexpected additional proteins, some of which are unidentified and none of which have been assessed as safe. And yet, despite these confessions about their secret sauce, some of us continue to believe that these plant-based burgers are healthier than the real beef burgers. Now, to address the title, is plant-based meat the future of the sustainable meat industry? The answer is, we don't know. Well, for me, I don't know. With concerns about health safety, prices, and quality of these meats, it's hard to say whether this will be the future of the sustainable meat industry. This kind of process and product needs time and further studies to be accepted in the market by consumers. But there's one question that we really need to answer in the first place. With the issues of global warming, rising sea levels, and a threat that the world is having another world war, do we still have a future?